P. Hornsby Austin, I'm Thorn Dreyer, and this is Rag Radio. Uh, and Fourth of July weekend, Rag Radio rock and roll. <laughs> uh, we come your way every Friday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. on KOOP, which is a, uh, uh, an all volunteer, collectively run uh, community radio station in Austin, Texas. We're rebroadcast on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., that's Eastern Time. Uh, on WFTE in Mount Cobb in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, both stations uh, uh, stream the show live, and everything's put up as a podcast at the Internet Archives after broadcast. So, uh, too cool for school. Tracy Schultz. <laughs> Tracy is my engineer and cohort. Tracy, how are you doing, sir? Uh, doing well. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, glad to have you. Did you have a good Fourth of July? Did you watch the fireworks? Uh Yes, uh, I did uh, see a little <laughs> bit. Of, I, saw, I watched them on TV. I was like, I was being kind of uh, yeah. in, inbound this time around. Yeah, well, we saw the fire. We went to the Elks Club and hang out, hung out by the pool and watched the. And then we walked over to the to Auditorium Shores to watch to look at the symphony. And there were like eighty thousand people. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just you, you just you do anything in Austin, and there's you know twenty thousand. So. Yeah, I was like, it, I, I, yeah, I didn't want to do the crowds this time. I was like, was I wanted easy. to kind of it keep it low. Bad. It was very pleasant. Also, the weather has been a little better. Uh, we had we were up in the 105s about a week ago, and then we sort of had a little relapse, and it was a little bit better. So, okay, uh, Guy Schwartz, somebody that I've known and known about and been and followed over many years, many years, many many years, uh, is. Uh, the, well, the Houston Press called him the godfather of Houston music. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means, and I asked him if I have to refer to him as uh, Don Schwartz and, uh, and otherwise <laughs> defer to Yes, him. my son, you don't have to do that, but I, w I someday may ask you to perform a service. <laughs> well, I, we'll see. Uh, Guy Schwartz is a musician, songwriter, producer, musical archivist, and political activist from Houston, Texas. Wow, that uh, sounds good. He, uh, also known as Blues Guy Schwartz, I didn't, I wasn't really familiar with that. Uh, his original music is rooted from playing with Texas legends as well as his own bands, Relayer and Z Rocks. And I would mention that many of us know, or many of you out there might know of his band, The New Jack Hippies, um, which, uh, part of which, is here with us today. We have we have a, a, a studio full of musicians, and I'll let you go ahead. And, oh, and Marlo Blue is with us, and will Yay, also Marlo. join us uh, in the conversation. And Marlo yeah. is a longtime cohort of uh, of Don Schwartz, and uh, is a videographer. <laughs> and uh, she anchors the news at KPFT in Houston. Anchors the news at KPFT. So what more? So what, she, what she, could she be owes done? stuff to you for helping start that stuff. My old stomping grounds, yeah. KPFT in Houston. Okay, uh, introduce the, the, the other musicians for us. Got well, you. right next to me, uh, we have Billy Bourbon, who I, I've lately been uh, playing bass in the Billy Bourbon Band, and we've produced an album together uh, full of weed songs. And uh, Billy has also come to Austin with me when we put together the Affordables, Guy Schwartz and the Affordables, so we're kind of incestuous playing with each other's bands. Roger Taus is behind me playing bass. Roger is my... Oh, almost 40 years songwriting and production partner. We are the ones that were originally named the New Jack Hippies. Almost 40 years? Well, you're not even 40, are you? Um, is it, is it, is it, is it, Go ahead. Sweet, <laughs> and over there in the corner, certainly, certainly working on 40 years old, is uh, Rick Lyon, who I played with in a Houston band called La Paz. 43 years ago and have uh, reunited for for the Austin band it's it's very cool guy guy Schwartz has been making music been performing been recording or whatever since I was a little so, children well almost since he just since he was just barely out of diapers and and that's speculative on my part I I can't I have no personal knowledge of this but well I, I the first picture of me in a musical joint I'm I'm sound asleep on Ella Fitzgerald's lap at a jam session in Harlem at the age of three at about 3 a.m. 
<laughs> there you go. And I don't know whether I got up to sing or tell those musicians, get out of the way I want to play. <laughs> but, but very soon you would. Huh? I, I would. And I would say that, that, point out that Guy has played back up, originally bass and then later guitar, but especially bass, with an awful lot of well-known uh, blues musicians and rock musicians. And uh, uh, Give had, props to some Austin guys. Uh, I, I played with Gurf Morlix for, for uh, Blaze Foley. We played with Blaze together and, and with B.W. Stevenson together, as, as well as did Roger. And uh, let's see, who else from Austin that I should be naming and I'm not? I, I don't know. Yeah, I My know. mind goes blank, but uh, like I said, we're we got a new weed album coming out, and, <laughs> and, we're, thus, we're, and we're, thus your we're, mind we're goes working blank. our tolerance back up. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I think one thing, and we're going to get into some music very quickly here. But one thing I would point out is that, and I grew up in Houston. Houston is my home, and I think that there's there's so much of your history that syncs with Houston music history. And for people who don't know, everybody knows Austin his, Austin music. Houston has a very rich, rich and diverse uh, uh, music history to it. And uh, we were talking earlier about Liberty Hall oh, and yeah. Lightning and Hopkins. And uh, you said that you, you, and you backed up Lightning and Hopkins before Liberty I, Hall. I, I, you probably I did. backed up other musicians. Liberty Hall was a classic, classic venue. I had I had location 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 going. Uh, I had a house a block in front of Liberty Hall, so at the last minute when something was needed, whether it was gear or a Shenover musician, Street, exactly that was on Shenover. I was on Hamilton Street, one block in front, and uh, and one night, uh, Roberto Gonzalez calls and says we need a bass player for Lightning Hopkins, and I got I had met I had met Sam when. Uh, when, when my friend Jim Clinton, I was at 15, he was 18, he picked me up and said, there's a folk music concert at the JCC, come on with me. He picked me up, and then we went into the ghetto and picked up some old black man, and we went to the JCC, and I was amazed when I was sitting right next to this little four-foot-by-four-foot four stage, and they put a chair on there, and the old man is Sam Lightning Hopkins, and, and I got to absorb that at 15 and really started my adventure into the blues besides what my parents had exposed me to and the other artist in the folk music concert was John Lomax who then stood up and told stories and did chants and things Which like John that. Which John Lomax was this? The old man. The old man. Yeah, he uh, he, uh, he they, they definitely blew my mind. The, for night. people who don't know the Lomax, there's, a, there's an entire clan. The Lomax yes. family are all, are all played incredibly important roles in, in, in roots music in this country, in documenting it, in, in uh, somebody else. We had Chris Strockwitz, uh, our Hooli Records, oh, great. On, on this show uh, just a few weeks ago. Another archivist. Who, uh, an archivist and who also uh, played a, more, a very important role in, in uh, with yeah, Man Slipscomb. If it weren't uh, for these guys, you would not have heard of half the people that made, or most of the people that made music in the first half of the 20th century. And somebody else who I believe you recorded with, or at his studio, or somebody at one point, who had played a major role with in getting a certain amount of music out there to the people was uh, Huey P. Moe. That's true. Uh, Roger and I both were uh, studio musicians uh, for Huey, yeah. who has a good reputation and a bad reputation well, and all kinds of reputations. But when he made a lot of money, he sure got a lot of us to come into the studio and cut all day long, two different b studio bands and two studios, cutting everything that was on the charts, everything he could find. And we all got a paycheck and got to go home and call ourselves professional musicians. He was a great man and played that uh, Cajun and rock and roll and country on KPFT on his show. It had an incredible following, especially in the prisons, which was ironic because he would later be a follower when he was in prison. Yes. What was the name uh, of that studio? Sugar Hill. It was Sugar Hill. That's Sugar Hill. It was Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill Studio. And Gold Star Studio before that where I... Uh, Got to see a f lot of my first recording sessions in the early days, just hanging around with the 13th floor elevators and Bubble Puppy and watching them record. And yeah, I want to do it like these guys. Jubilee Hall was where I first saw the 13th floor elevators. That's right. What an experience that was. That was a great place. A Bill great Browder, place. who may show up here, I, I, I remember standing in front of Jubilee Hall one night when... Uh, John Mayall was playing and Billy Gibbons was sitting in with him and we were out front and Bill's telling me he's, uh, he's going to leave our high school band and go play with these guys called Denim 
But their guitar player who left, he introduced me to that guitar player, Ricky Rabau, who was playing in La Paz with Rick Lyon, who sits behind me right now, and I joined La Paz. So we kind of traded off right there at Jubilee Hall. A lot of freaking history. Yeah. <laughs> Play some music for us. Okay. Guy Schwartz at all. Guy Schwartz on Rag Radio with uh, Roger Taus of the Bottom New Jack the Hippies. Oh, we're not through. 
You're I tricking me. I'm just kind of going, rag, oh, mom, a rag. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Billy Bourbon and Rick Lyon. All right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, great. Great stuff. Great stuff. And it's nice. No, it's nice. I like to have a little uh, sort of rag radio background there. Sort of. um, Marlo. Marlo Blue. Hello. You guys, you guys, all right, you... You do news at KPFT. I am the news anchor for the KPFT local news at 4 p.m. I've been doing it for about mm, six years now, I guess. Well, that's uh, you know when we when I was at KPFT, which was I don't know when last year. The beginning. It last wasn't year. last year. It was year before last. I think. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Was that the early seventies and maybe before last? Year? Yeah. I, th I think uh, you got tired of getting yeah, shot at in Space <laughs> City News, so you decided, so to, we get decided to get bombed. Bombed at Pacifica. Um, we started uh, the we started an, uh, the hour long newscast, right. which we called Life on Earth, yeah. uh, back then. And Gary Thayer and Mitch Green were the anchors. So, oh yeah, uh, that was an exciting time. And it's true, we had we faced the Klan. The KPFT was the I believe the only station in the history of the United States to ever get bombed off the air. But it was bombed off the air twice. Yeah. So the transmitter was bombed off. And the you know, if it was good one time, do it again, because it's even better as far as the Klan was concerned, as yeah, far as we could right. tell. Yeah. Well, Mitch Green tells the story, and I'll, I'll make this quick. But uh, Frank Converse, the grand dragon of the Klan, uh, was all upset about the station. And he's, he was upset that they did, he wanted a voice. He said, well, why don't you have anybody like us on there? So, of course, the station said, okay. Do a show. Yeah. So the Klan got a show. Yeah. And uh, so apparently they, they did, nobody listened. <laughs> and they got, they got real upset about that. And so they went and bombed the station for a second time. You know, Thorne, we had a 40th anniversary for KPFT a couple of years ago. I know, ago. I wasn't able to make it in. And we, uh, one of the best parts about it was that somebody walked up to the station, came in in a long coat, a little scary. You know, we have to lock our doors now, right. which we never had to do in the right. past. And they brought over, and there was a brick with $400 wrapped around it. And the little message on it said, thank you, you keep us in business, the KKK. <laughs> how wonderful I don't know how wonderful exactly when we were publishing Space City at that time the Klan was just the, it was like the rebirth of the, of the Klan you know and the Klan I think was afraid of black people so they picked on us you don't think <laughs> you, you were a lot they didn't think we would fight back but yeah. actually we you know we, uh, we did a little bit <laughs> but, uh, it was a crazy time they would shoot up our offices and, and uh uh, everybody, I mean, they uh, bombed our, our advertisers. And yeah. so that was well, it just proves the old adage, if you, if you want to really get back at somebody, give them a show on public radio. Give them a show on public radio. <laughs> That'll show them. <laughs> okay, so you guys do a television show, too. We do. Um, we have it on one of the cable services. It's Houston Media Source. I, I hope I can say that. And, uh, sure. We've had it now for about nine years, ten years maybe. It's an hour-long program, okay. and we... We actually have our own replacement series every summer because uh, we'll do half of the year with Guy Schwartz Music Machine and then the other half maybe South by Due East, so, uh, which is kind of fun. And it features um, original music. We don't, you know, there's so many problems with other things to do it, but there's such a, uh, very few people actually come into a club and say, I want to hear your original music. So we give musicians a chance to really show what they're doing, which is... I would mention, sense. too, that we've got, we're surrounded by video cameras in here and that. <laughs> so we're being... Uh, Self-conscious. It's, it's one of those multimedia uh, <laughs> afternoons at, uh, on RAG Radio. Uh, okay, uh, what, tell us, uh, uh, South by... South by Dewey. Dewey. East. Tell us what that is. Well, what that is, it, it started out as an idea one year when South by Southwest... Uh, came up with their uh, lineup and there was only one artist from Houston and it was a country singer and uh, we all were grumbling about well uh, there's a lot more to Houston music than that and Marlo came up with the idea that we should have a showcase here in Austin during South by Southwest and a showcase in Houston full of Houston music back in the days when everybody was not doing alternative showcases and uh, one of our friends at earthwire.net a one of the first internet recording studio uh, uh, radio stations and performance spaces uh, suggested the name South by Due East which kinda hung on us in a way that we may not be so sure about it ten years later but 
what happened is everything was successful. Marlo rented a camera. I took, pic- I took video of all the artists that played in Houston so that she could uh, see who played. That was the idea. I made a little film with that camera, and five of the artists got nominations at the Houston Press Music Awards. One of them, uh, one of them got an uh, interview in Bass Player Magazine, and the film did a lot of good for a lot of local musicians. So starting the next year, it was just a Houston event where we filmed and recorded multi-track recording headed up by Roger Taus, our chief engineer. And uh, we made free videos with great audio for all these Houston artists and made a cable access TV show so that if someone yeah. turns in to see Hamilton Loomis, they also have to to watch the uh, Fondue Monks and Rusted Shut and mm-hmm. see all kinds of the music we've got. We saw it as a problem that um, basically Houston was being represented at that point in time at uh, the big festival here in Austin, of course, South by Southwest, by cover bands. And, uh, you know, that's just not what Houston music is about. Yeah. We're just Houston not has more live music and more live music venues than Austin. Well, I know people hate to hear that, but what Austin has is a great crowd that comes in here. It comes into the venue knowing what they're listening for yeah, it's a very and being able crowd. to very. appreciate very, yeah. who they're yeah. listening. If somebody yeah. sits in, they know who that nobody is. Y- Houston has a lot more root music, has a lot more blues, uh, certainly a lot more jazz. Oh, definitely. Uh, so, so. definitely. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, I'm Thorne Dreyer. This is Rag Radio. Guy Schwartz, uh, Marla Blue, and the whole crew. <laughs> we'll be right back. The van died suddenly, so I coasted through the underpass Worried about the police, cause I'm still a part of the underclass Some brothers pushed me off the streets, now I don't know what to do Another 30 minutes late, but I'm still on my way to you Another night in America Another night out in the heat Another night in America Another night out on the street She's waiting with the car that works She's waiting there for me She's such a piece of work Oh, I know you'd love her too I'll see her when I can But I still got some work to do Another night in America Calling on my cell phone And walking in the heat Another night in America Another night out on the street Another night in America It's a new world order filled with hate and fear Another night in America We'll have to love our way out of here New Orleans, Louisiana isn't what it used to be Hope those people find their way back home in harmony America was willing, but the power let us down They was hoarding all the money while New Orleans went down Another night in America We could see the water rising, we watched on CNN Another night in America Can't let it happen that way again Another night in America It's a new life Filled with hate and fear Another night in America We'll have to love our way out of here Still love America Something's gotta change In America It's not the same old America All right, I'm Thorne Dreyer. This is Rag Radio, uh, Guy Schwartz, and uh, a, uh, a cast of thousands. A uh, <laughs> Let's hear from everybody. Bless your hearts. Rock and roll on Rag Radio. Um, 
Okay, we're going to go right into some music in just one second. Uh, why don't you tell us again, Guy, who, the, who, the, who is accompanying, who are all Again, there's here. Roger Taus, my partner with the New Jack Hippies, uh, Marlo Blues on the cameras, Billy Bourbon's over here getting ready to sing the next song from our upcoming Bourbon and Schwartz album, and Rick Lyon is on the cajon. Okay, and Tracy Schultz is on the uh, board. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Are you okay. sweating over are a you hot bored, console? Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hit it. Okay, this is from uh, the upcoming album, Weed at Walmart. They say, Billy, what's all these songs about weed, man? Between you and Jason Bowen, don't we have all we need? He said, I want to feel like I've done my part when they start selling weed at Walmart. Weed at Walmart, yeah. Put a smile in every eye Well that refund line It ain't never gonna be the same Half the people wanna argue about the seeds And their Walmart brand weed Other half forgot why they came They have a whole department Devoted to weed Happiest damn employees that you ever seen. The only bad thing with Walmart starts selling pot. It's finding your way out of the parking lot, they say. Billy, it's all them songs about weed, man. Between you and Willie Nelson, don't we have all we need? He said, I want to feel like I've done my part when they start selling weed at Walmart. We at Walmart, yeah. Oh, it'll be a great day in America. They'll have a green light special in aisle number four. They got some Yucatan blue, man, it's moving out the door. Only about 20 bucks for Walmart brand weed, that's all it takes. And $200 for Little Debbie Cakes. They'll have a drive through they'll have a fast lane. First time I charge weed on a visa, I know I got it made. Low, low prices, that's a Walmart guarantee. You know that little yellow smiley face? Looks kind of stoned to me. They say, Billy, what's all them songs about weed, man? Between you and Snoop Lion, don't we have all we need? I said, I want to feel like I've done my part. When they start selling weed at Walmart, weed at Walmart, yeah. Oh, Mr. Guy Schwartz, he's got a retirement plan. He wants to be the, wants to be the greeter at Walmart when they start this stuff up, you know. Can I see what's in your bag, please? I ain't waiting for Walmart to have no piddly little sale. I'm heading straight to Sam's Club and getting a big old bail. Get out of that forklift. I want one off the top shelf. <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff. Guy Schwartz. Thank you. Um, listen, uh, oh, oh I, this is interesting. This is in your own words. You said we're talking history now. We're talking back to Houston My history. You words. say, I soon settled down into four, four night-a-week gigs at the Golden Fleece uh, in downtown Houston, a section called Market Square. The band was led by Ray Salazar, a great vocalist who later had a couple of minor hit singles on two nights, Wednesdays and Thursdays. We played five sets a night to thir three to 500 patrons for $20 a man, then rehearsed till 4 or 5 a.m. Then I went home, changed clothes, ate breakfast, had a toke or two, and went to high school. On the weekends, the gig lasted till 5 a.m., and another band was added to alternate sets with us. Uh, <laughs> those were some times. Uh, this was what? When was this? I guess from 66, 67. Market, that, Market that Square was 60s, 70s, I guess. And, yeah. You know, Allen's Landing and uh, that whole that whole. That was a blast. There. Love Street Light Circus at it Allen's was a, Landing. Time. You were in high school. I, you went to school with Vince Bell. I did. And, and, and elementary school. Elementary and junior school. high school. In fact, on Vince the very Bell, for those who don't know, is a, a long time, a legendary uh, uh, 
folk, Houston based, I guess. Or Houston based, then Austin uh, based, then Berkeley based, then and then, uh, yeah, Galveston yeah, based. And then Nashville based. And Who's been on our? Who was our guest for for an hour one time? Had a great show. Boy, he's uh, got he's got way more than an hour in music and way uh, more than an hour in stories. Yeah, yeah. If you've seen the Anderson Fair movie, uh, the film that was done by uh, Bruce Bryant, Bruce uh, Bryant and Jim J- Barham, great movie about the Anderson Fair Retail Restaurant, which is the longest running uh, acoustic uh, venue, I think, in the country, or at least it's that's true. The, I don't know who keeps these records. But, and those uh, <laughs> guys are doing a film now on Vince as well. We had, we had all of them on here, oh, too, great, great. including Shake Russell. Oh, good. We had like a half a dozen people. And, and, and uh, Tim, uh, Tim Leatherwood, uh, manager of Anderson Fair. So that was, a, we, we've tried to sort of document a little bit of history on this show, so... Uh, well, that was a great kind of scene. There's so much great music that came out of that scene. Uh, Lyle Lovett, Nancy Griffin. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Towns the Van Mine. Zandt, Towns, perhaps? yeah. Guy Towns. Clark? Yeah. The, well, you know, I, I think of Guy, I think of Sand Mountain. Well, yeah. I think of sneaking out at the age of 13 and seeing Guy and seeing uh, John Dusendorf, you know, became John Denver. And, and Lightning Hopkins playing, you know, at, at the same time. The Sand Mountain light, was, you know. of course, really a Latter-day Beatnik uh, a coffee house. That's correct. Uh, sort of the... As was the cellar, which uh, became a uh, biker hangout, a rock and and, and <laughs> rock and blues place, while yeah. the other coffee shop, uh, Sand Mountain, became a folk place. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's important. I mean, we talk a lot about Austin music history, and Austin has become legendary. And certainly, Vulcan Gas Company and Armadillo World Headquarters and Shoal Creek and all you know it played. A significant role in the evolution of, of American music. Uh, significant but, in mine at Vulcan. Uh, it was the first time I got to play with Muddy Waters. Yeah, we, that was beautiful. Johnny Winter uh, yeah. put me up to that, and it was it was a, it was a mind changing, very thing. very cool. So, um, okay, tell us about some of the things you've been doing recently. Well, recently we do the TV series. We we make the music. We uh, have the festival. I edit about half the year, get ready for the next festival, and then edit half year, and then go on the road. And lately, I've uh, my new Jack Hippies are getting old and comfortable and setting their <laughs> the ways, old Jack and they they don't necessarily want to go on the road and and <laughs> and do the tough parts with me. So. Uh, I, I, I formed a band. Sean McNulty, a uh, Austin bass player, said, "Why don't we just form an Austin band?" And that's now called Guy Schwartz and the Affordables. And I go out and travel the country, doing like when Chuck Berry called me at the age of 15 and said, "How many guys are in the band?" Well, there's four of us. Well, then go down to the record store and buy four copies of Chuck Berry's greatest hits and learn those songs, and we'll do the show. I now have two little secret websites. Go to this website, and there's 20 of my blues songs, if it's a blues show, or 20 of my Americana, rock, and everything songs, if it's another show. And I have uh, several different bands around the country that back me up. Why don't you tell us now where people can go if they want to catch some of that stuff. Tell us the website. We'll do it again at the end. But now, are we allowed to divide can, a call we, of action, call to action can, like we that? We just don't. You can't tell them to go there. You can tell me to tell them I to can go tell somewhere. You, yes, but, <laughs> but you can, don't. I no, have, no, I can't tell you to tell them. I can tell you that you can offer the opportunity. But you just to them. told me to tell them. No, 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 no. See, <laughs> so why don't you this tell is them? A semant- Look, <laughs> and I think both of you ought to have to phrase <laughs> it in the form of a question. I think we should throw but some one way the one way or the other. The new Jack Hippies, Blues Guy Schwartz, which is the name I use for my blues album. Billy Bourbon's albums, uh, they're all available at all of the places where you can go buy music online. Okay. iTunes, CD Baby, Walmart, Best okay. Buy, etc. Okay. I suggest just contacting me and seeing if I can take a few out of my trunk so I get all the money. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you, of course, as you did a minute ago you've sung, sung a lot about marijuana about you know and you've been involved in other kinds of activism in the past it's uh, true what do you see as the role of the musician in relation to maybe social no. change and such i don't know about the musician because I, I, t- I tend to to separate those guys because there's a lot of guys that are great musicians and just play other people's music and yeah. they're killer technicians but the the role of the artist the songwriter uh is is communicate and therefore and write com- write about what you're going through yeah and, right. and write about your world 
Right. And to, and my world is that I still run a risk of being pulled over and given a ticket or incarcerated any anywhere I go, unless they're one of the states that recognize my California prescription for marijuana. And uh, so we we are we are actively involved. I, of course, you know I, I was out on the streets with uh, with you and Mickey Leland and a whole bunch of us back in the '60s, uh, oh, yeah. trying to change the world and making little changes. And yeah. and I continue to argue with people on Facebook, even though I don't argue as much. I, I, I give them something to think about that might expand uh, you know, how they think about things already, because it's so hard to communicate these days with the uh, news organizations and government feeding us so many different types of facts and giving us so many descriptions of what this word means when someone else says it means something else, and then you can't have a decent conversation anymore. So I, Well, things are so kind of sort of separated out and just dispersed especially by the internet divide by and conquer way, divide and uh, and or divide and sort of smother i've result. got a line in an old song that says we don't try to be too free we're comfortable here <laughs> well, okay. uh that that when you talk about marijuana and legalization of marijuana and uh, your prescription or whatever it's interesting that it certainly seems like things are moving in, a, in one direction and that popular sentiment and what we've seen what we saw in colorado what we saw you know i mean that there's there's, a, there's, that's been. I mean, when we back in the '60s, when I, I don't think I actually did. Oh, maybe I did. <laughs> when we smoked up, it, it was like, it, it was a real. I mean, people still, it was still reefer madness, time, madness. Time. Well, you know, I mean, people thought of it as being the demographic is aging into power. You know, the people who were activists in the '60s are now. Governors. The man. <laughs> the man, yeah. Right, right. Well, this is so true. This we all so spend true. our moments being the man. As soon as you become dad, you're the man to somebody. Okay, <laughs> make some music for us. Okay, music. Hadn't thought about what we're going to do next. I'm sure you'll think of something. I learned this lick from Lightning Hopkins. Right now. 
Guy Schwartz, Billy Bourbon, Roger Towles, Rick Lyon, music on Rag Radio. Thank you, Thorn Dryer. That's who I am. That's right. With Tracy Schultz. <laughs> okay. I uh, want to thank everybody. We'll be right back in just a minute. Okay, uh, I'm Thorne Dreyer. This is Rag Radio. Guy Schwartz, who hates to leave New Orleans. Oh, I do. And hates to leave Austin, perhaps, because there's so much music. I do. There. There's so much music between Austin and New Orleans and Houston. You know, we just, That's we really just, a we big just, triangle there, isn't it? We so, live in the middle of the most yeah. wonderful place for music. Certainly, certainly true. That was, what was that from? What? That's from uh, the new blues album that was released in uh, February called... Uh, Blues Writer six version six point zero. Okay, and and earlier I don't think we identified it at our first break. We played another night in America. Another night in America from my Chameleon album in uh, in oh eight. On another, and we did that on another afternoon afternoon in Austin. So. That's true. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to go into, and I think you have a song to sort of introduce this realm. And uh, I'm going to when we when we go to this discussion, I want to get Marlowe in too. Uh, but we want to talk about, I don't know, the digital era, musicians in the digital era, social media, uh, and, uh, well, that's your cue. I do have a song Guy about Schwartz. social media. I'm gonna set up a Facebook page. I'm gonna set up a Facebook page. Gonna set up a Facebook page so I can be friends with you. Gonna write a little message to you. Then I'll maybe post a comment or two. I'm gonna like it and share almost everything you do. Oh, I gotta be friends with you. Sit around and wait for you to friend me up. Just wait for you to friend me up. Don't hesitate, baby. You gotta friend me up. I wanna be friends with you. I'm gonna set up a Facebook page. I'm gonna set up a Facebook page. I'm gonna set up a Facebook page so I can be friends with you. Billy Bourbon, will you be my friend? You know, the very first time that guy played this song for me, he sprung it on me on, on stage like he often does. And we went outside for our safety meeting, and after the second number, we uh, started talking about the song. And I said, you know, guy, 
I think you may have written the perfect Facebook song. And Guy said without a, even a pause, I don't think it's the perfect Facebook song because it don't say nothing about mama or prison or getting drunk or none of that <laughs> stuff. And I said, you're right. I think you ought to stick with pictures of kittens and food porn. I'm going to set up a Facebook page. I'm going to set up a Facebook page. I'm going to set up a Facebook page so I can be friends with you. You know, this all started back at my ex-girlfriend's MySpace page. I was stalking around her page and suddenly saw your picture come up in her top 24 friends. As uh, soon as I saw that smiling face, I knew. Come on, baby. Oh, come on, baby. Friend me up. Uh, singing a little internet blues. <laughs> Guy Swartz, Billy Bourbon. Okay, let's kick kick it off from there. You know, uh, social media and the internet has been wonderful for me. Uh, I I never made it as a musician. I kind of came close to being a minor league rock star a couple times. Did the same things all the big rock stars did, flying to the gigs, but never put together the the the, the savings account. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, in oh, the, you mean this all involves money? It can. Money. It can and has for a few of my friends. I thought but, it was all about love. Well, I, it, is, it is about love, but, but it would be lovely to be able to support yourself in your old age out of your body of work. But, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't it be loverly? Yes, it yeah. would. <laughs> and, and, and once the Internet came around, I mean, I went, I'm, I, I went back to college and learned how to do all the digital stuff because uh, it seemed like a great opportunity. And, you know, what happens is you can't really make a fortune on the web, but a lot more musicians can make a little bit of money off their catalog because of the web. And using social media to develop a, a rapport with your audience is just wonderful. So in, in 2006, I put it out there that I'm going to do a tour. And I'm not calling any venues, and I'm not calling any booking agents. I'm letting my MySpace and Facebook friends, here's my route. If you live along this route, let's figure out something musical we can do. Or if you aren't musical yourself, we'll figure out something with some of your friends. And booked 100 dates over six months where we didn't do too many conventional venues. The ones we did were lined up by musicians in their towns with their venues, and I came along and played with them. And, and, and Marlo and I were able to make a whole season of Guy Schwartz's Road Journal, play a hundred shows, meet friends, sell lots of CDs and downloads, and, and I've been touring that way ever since without ever having to talk to a booking agent. The world of digital content is really amazing, and being able to create digital content so easily and so effectively, uh, I think has really changed our world. It's, I think, go ahead, I think go ahead. you know, historically the, the musicians have almost always made their money from their shows. The record sales, there was always a record company in between and, and how many hands were out taking that money. But the shows, the artists get more of the money with the internet. And like he says, being able to promote yourself, that's where you're going to get the money. You may not, like, the downloads may not pay you that much. Yeah. But you still get, guys still yeah. get a couple get of checks a, a month. I get a check almost every week from, uh, from CD Baby. Yeah. David Rovix was on our show recently. And David had, puts all of his Great stuff player. out. What's uh, Tracy, what is the... The medium he uses, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> anyway, like he puts skipping. he puts everything out, sure. and then people ask people for a donation when mm -hmm. they download it. But all of his stuff, everything is out there yeah. available to the public. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's just a brave new world. It really is brave well, new really world. Is. I mean, good. there's the there's the uh, the Radiohead uh, story. Of, you may have heard a few years ago. They put out their album. Just said like, give us whatever you think Same it's thing. worth. Yeah. They averaged four dollars a, a purchase, sixteen million times. <laughs> <laughs> and who was it? You two, you two that put one out and just gave it away for free as a one twenty eight uh, K M P three. And if you want the one that sounds better, you can pay for it. Okay, it's a lot easier to produce. I mean, with the technology, 
you know, with the equipment that's available. Uh, you can have a home studio. It's so much easier to put stuff out there. Uh, you can have this, a studio in, in your car and your, pull it up and be set up to record multi-track in 30, 40 minutes. This has been done. Right. It's been done, yeah. yeah. Often. <laughs> often. You can have a radio station in your car. So. But the interesting it's thing is, is, I mean, the whole question is, okay, you know, what's happened? Now, obviously the ro role of the big record labels has, has been transformed. Uh, the whole distribution system has been transformed. There are... There is so much product out there. It's on the one hand, you have the capability, you have the potential to reach people in a way that you never did before without having to have a lot of money. On the other hand, it's so easy to get lost. Yeah, but there's a closeness that people have now with their fan group, with their demographics. Not only are you able to literally go and do a house concert and sell to your friends' friends, their friends. People seem to like being able to be a part of all of that. And I think that makes a big difference. And it goes in other genres, too. I, I, I read a lot. And at the end, I, I switched over to Kindle a few, a few years ago. And at the end of the book, this reading, the author gives me his personal email address. Mm -hmm. I talked to the guy who wrote this book that I yeah. thought was fabulous. And, and it's like she said, you, it's much more personal now. There yeah. goes Billy Bourbon proving how literate he is. There's two sides <laughs> to all of this because, on the other hand, bookstores are going out of business, and sure. I like a book in my hands. Sure. You know, it does I, feel good. I can't read it online. It doesn't. I mean, I have to read online all the time, obviously, but no, I don't read books that way because yeah. Yeah. somehow that's. It don't, don't bother me. Yeah, but and it the gives people bigger. like me a lot more business because I read books on tape. Uh -huh. So yeah. And Marla does the voiceover, actually reading the book, mm -hmm. so they can listen to the books on tape and on the podcast. Um, this, uh, I think this. I think next song we're going to do here. We're also going to address the uh, some of the more negative aspects of the social media. I think we need to do that now because we're going to be running out of time. So let's. How do, long this we is got? Be we might last. have to do the quick version. This is the last. Yeah, do the. We've got no, six, we're, seven we're minutes. Okay, so. Billy, right. Billy, you know how to do it quick. Double time. <laughs> Hey, pay attention to me. 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 The other night I had me a date with a modern girl. And you could tell she was a modern girl because as soon as we got to the nice restaurant I took her to, before the maitre d' could even open up the menu for the gals, she pulled out a mobile device and set it on the table right next to her salad fork, you know, there. And I could tell it was going to be a long night of dating, because usually when you used to date, you'd go out and you'd swap lies and flirt a little bit, maybe even play footsie on that first one, you know. But uh, I had a feeling she was going to be more interested in her Angry Birds game or Candy Crush or something like that than talking to me. And, being the rough old cop that I am, I said, hey, baby, you know, I did not invite you on this date to see how well you tweet. And what I really want you to do is put that thing away. Because I'm right here. Hey, pay attention to me. Hey, pay attention to me. Hey, pay attention to me. Hey, Wait a second, that's a call to action. To me. I remember where I was when I wrote this song. I was playing in Joe's Crab Shack down in Galveston Island. It was beautiful down there, had palm trees and pelicans and beautiful blue sky and ocean and such. And I opened up my eyes and looked out in the crowd. Half the people in the audience, maybe even more than half the people, were staring vacantly into their mobile devices. Even some people who were clearly on a date, sitting across the table from each other, both had their mobile devices up looking. I could see their faces reflected in the glow. And I decided right then and there that I was going to write me a song to capture their attention, if even for one self-absorbed moment. Because I'm right here. Hey, pay attention to me. Hey. Pay attention to me, hey, pay attention to me, hey, pay attention to me.
so you know how people are. We're all surrounded by millions of people every day down here in the big city. I bet even right now, as I'm singing this song, there's somebody listening who are staring into their mobile device, completely unaware that I'm singing about them, staring at their mobile device. And there's probably even a couple more people, you know how posers are, they're out there, they're looking at their mobile device, realizing I'm singing about them, but they don't know what to do, so they just continue to stare into their mobile device. And there's even some people out there who live in the real world still. Probably don't even read a Kindle book, Thor. <laughs> don't tell me. And what I want those people to do right now is to pull out their mobile devices or their laptop or whatever they got, their iPad. And I want you to, I want you to write about us on your Facebook page. You heard us on the Coop Radio, and you can even go on and post links to their page, to their podcast and such, and replay it and tell everybody about it. And we promise, when we're playing the big old Reliance Center in Houston, Texas, y'all can come backstage and eat all the hors d'oeuvres. But we gotta do it for each other, people. You gotta reach out and touch another person. You can't always just be staring in your mobile device. You gotta hold hands gotta be somebody cause I'm right here hey pay attention to me 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 okay Guy Schwartz Billy Bourbon Roger Towles, Rick Lyon, Marlo Blue on Rag Radio. Give us the website again. GuySchwartz.com. That's real hard. <laughs> I'm Thorn Dryer. We'll catch you next week, 2 o'clock Friday, K O O P. Or be Austin. Thank you, Thorn. Hi, I'm Guy Schwartz. And I'm Marlo Blue.